at the end of the day, like there's so many skills worth knowing or, or at least being aware of, right? Because the whole e-com thing is like a, to me, it's like an orchestra because it's like, okay, the short form content works and we're driving it to Amazon, but X amount of people spill over to our website. And then, you know, where's the Facebook ads guy targeting those? And people are going to Google and searching for your brand. Are you at the top, top of the search results? Are you collecting emails? What's your email strategy look like? You know, are you doing SMS? Are you doing influencers? Like there's so many things, a lot of ways to make money with this shit. One of my failures was a, a keto cookie brand. It was going really well for a while, and then people just stopped eating keto. And so that, right. that unfortunately, like all my search area became useless. But if you're in more of like a, you know, permanent area, like I have a friend in pet supplements, you can't search any pet supplement without seeing him at the top. I have like, I have genius caffeine, you know, caffeine pills. Mm -hmm. Those are areas that seem to be pretty, pretty timeless. And as long as people are searching them, you'll be getting meaningful sales on Amazon. Wow. That, you mentioned something really interesting that I wanted to actually, it was one of my questions that I wanted to ask you is, you know, you're obviously super successful, but what are some failures that you've experienced? How many brands have you launched? Because I mean, I hear about genius and obviously top shelf is crushing it, but what are some things that didn't work out? I got, I got really lucky in the beginning and then I got lucky to, to fail a little bit later because I think you need some failure to, to learn, but I launched three brands around the time of Genius. All of them did pretty well. Uh, you know, Genius was the eight-figure one. I had two other seven-figure brands. And then I exited those. Before starting Top Shelf, I started two other food companies. And I acquired another one. And, um, mm. you know, when COVID hit, everyone was buying food on Amazon. It's great. Lots of people buying snacks on Amazon. So we, we made a go of it. And we doubled down. And we poured more money into it. Now, food margins are horrible like absolutely horrible, really, really tough to make it work. Um, but you're seeing these sales increase and you're thinking people are always going to shop online. So you keep doubling down, you put in, you know, more money, more money, you raise a little money. And long story short, there was no light at the end of that rainbow. So I don't know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 later, those, those brands ended up being written off and they were good brands. Like one was called smart cookies, like nailed the branding, had the audience, right. It was up to like 150,000 a month, but it just was never profitable. And, you know, and then, and then all the inflation stuff hit. So margins went up or mm -hmm. margins went down and, um, you know, then demand started to shrink with less people buying online. And that was just a lesson in unit economics and, and, uh, you know, not getting blinded by your own success, so to speak. Right. So you kind of didn't get emotionally attached to that. Cause I think some people in that situation maybe would let the ego of like their success get to their head and be like, oh, I'm going to make this work. You well, I did like, for a while. Yeah. Oh, I did okay. for a while, for sure, for sure. And that's what you know. It could have been a. It could have been a hundred thousand dollar mistake, and instead, it probably ended up being three or four times that. But um, again, it makes you. It, it improves your critical thinking skills if you're willing to kind of like stop and and you know. Now I got to ask myself all those questions with every product we come out. Is this right? Is this right? And and I do think it puts in another layer for eventual success, but uh, it's definitely not a fun lesson to learn at the time. Do you think when you started those three brands then, even though they were all successful, like, was it, did you start those three because you had an interest in them? You, because you, you knew they were great opportunities and you didn't want to just want to choose one or was it to reduce risk from just one brand? I think a little bit of both. Like I was just really, really into all of it and, mm -hmm. you know, serving mm -hmm. different customers with different brand identities. I had a partner in one of them who, you know, had their whole vision and idea and so at the time I was just thinking like, I mean, both, you know, it reduces mm -hmm. risk a little bit, but it's also just a lot of fun creating and bringing new, new stuff to market. <laughs> that's, I love that. Cause that's how I feel a lot of times. I'm just like, man, I'm just having so much fun. Uh, you know, I should just focus all in on one thing, but I have so much fun, like just working with people and like learning more and, um, it's just a great time. So what are some, actually you already touched on this, you know, short form content is probably the number one skill to learn. What do you think would be next? Do you think brand design, for example, or like just brand identity is worthwhile to learn or should you just pay for that? Um, I think people should have interest in it for sure. Like, cause it's such an easy thing to answer. Usually you look within like a, a niche or a realm and it's like, you know, 20 brands that all kind of dominate it and they all kind of have a similar aesthetic or vibe. So you ask yourself like, why does this resonate to me with me and, and kind of work backwards from there? I don't think it's like a needle moving skill per se. I just think you kind of need mm -hmm. to know, you know, how that works and what it should look like. Um, I mean, really though, at the end of the day, like there's so many 
skills worth knowing or, or at least being aware of, right? Because the whole e-com thing is like a, to me, it's like an orchestra and you have traffic and there's the, the there's a traffic and conversion component. And when you can sync it all up, cause it's like, okay, the short form content works and we're driving it to Amazon, but X amount of people spill over to our website. And then, you know, where's the Facebook ads guy targeting those and mm -hmm. People are going to Google and searching for your brand. Are you at the top top of the search results? Are you collecting emails? What's your email strategy look like? Um, you know, are you doing SMS? Are you doing influencers? Like, there's so many things. So if you're young, master in one of the things. Like, really, really pour into it. And it's so obvious that it's, you know, short form right now. Mm -hmm. But you could also, like, just learn every in and in and out of of Facebook. I mean, like, like Facebook right. is still. The, I mean, you know, I'm preaching to the choir. That that's still like one of the. <laughs> that was one of the most ridiculous opportunities and it still is like landing pages and just different ways to talk to the consumers and yeah i was just kind of a ramble but i guess no that's good a lot of ways to make money with this shit yeah there really is a lot of ways to make money with this shit for sure